Recording in progress. I'm trying to get my screen a little wider so I can get the chat open. Um, but basically, what I what I would like to do is ask everyone here to to use that um, information that's presented. Go to menti.com, yeah, and you can put in the number that you see on that screen. Yes. And you can then start to indicate what country you're from. So how's that going for everyone? So the code there, I'll put in the chat just to make sure everybody gets the code. So you can click on this link if it's easier for you. And you click on that link you click on that link, you should be able to see um, the country and what code you're from, similar to what I'm showing you here, okay? So, how is that going for you guys? Are you putting in new information? Everybody can you know, join in, everybody join in, just let's, let's do a little bit of an icebreaker, join in and let's see how it works. So when we do that now, I should be able to indicate, if I go back, we should be able to see a little bit of um, how this works. So I should be able to now show you Log out. I got a sec. <clears throat> I'm putting in my country code, my country of Trinidad and Tobago. Hopefully you'll see that information coming up on your side as well. You should see a word cloud coming up. All right. And what I want to ask you to do as well is go into the chat and put in the information. Where are you from? Who are you? Let's, let's hear from you. Who exactly are you? What, where are you from? What post are you from? If you're from the post, what postal sector are you from? And so on. I'm seeing a few people raising their hands. Um, would you like to say something? Colleagues who are raising their hands. Um, Branka, you'd like to say something? I'd like let you speak. Branka, if you you can speak if um if you want, if you can go ahead and speak if you wish, or you can put it in the chat. Oh yeah, good from Bosnia, excellent. Um, other colleagues, please go in the chat and put in where you're from and have a, and let, let's, let's get interactive today. And see where you're from, who you're from, uh, where you're from, what post you're from. And let's, let's move forward with this. Yeah. All right. Good. It's good to, good to get some information from you guys. So thank you all for, for assisting us with that icebreaker. And let's. Continue putting your stuff in the chat and let's now begin. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And let's now begin by having um, our colleagues from Zimpost begin the session this morning, on this afternoon, on this evening, from wherever you are. Um, Benincia, I believe it's over to you. Good 
Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar series. Um, my name is Venencia Sigauke, Acting Manager Marketing and Sales uh, for Zimpost in Zimbabwe. I'm so excited uh, to be making this presentation, and it's such an honor for this platform um, on this webinar series. Allow me to share my screen um, is, oh, oh, on the presentation that I'm going to be making. Um, so as I begin my presentation, um, I'm going to be focusing on the Zimbabwe Mall. Uh, this is the name that we have given to the e-commerce platform that uh, Zimpost here in Zimbabwe is hosting as a national e-commerce platform. So that's, uh, if you want to visit our e-commerce platform, you just uh, write, um, that's our URL, www.zimbabwemore.host. Uh, so I'm going to be giving you an overview of the Zimbabwe Mall, um, its achievements. Then I'll also um, allow my colleagues to come in and uh, give an overview of why Zimpost chose the .post domain to host its e-commerce platform. So the Zimbabwe Mall, um, I'll allow for those who have got questions, I think soon after my presentation, we can um, then start sharing our questions and we have got a big panel here in Zimbabwe who would assist us in responding to some of the questions. So soon after each and every presentation, we will allow you, we'll allow you to, uh, to ask us questions. So the general overview of the Zimbabwe Mall, um, it began as a Zimpost online store in 2017. It was born soon after um, the Istanbul conference where the digital um, uh, participation of the postal sector in the digital economy was um, um, highlighted and Zimbabwe did not take um, time to, to, to make a decision we then came back and we then launched the Zimpost online store in 2017. When we launched it, it was, a, it was only limited to our postal services. That's why we named it a Zimpost online store. But we then saw the opportunity to harness uh, in the digital economy and we then rebranded the Zimpost online store to a national e-commerce platform. Um, and it was then named uh, the Zimbabwe Mall, where government actually launched uh, this e-commerce platform. We, we saw it as an opportunity for not only postal products to, to sit on that particular mall, but also other retailers, macro to small to medium enterprises, um, any e-buyer, e-seller who wish to, be, to participate in the global economy to actually be able to sit on this mall taking into consideration our um, um, capability as far as uh, first mile delivery and last mile deliveries uh, is concerned, we then saw it that this was an opportunity for the postal sector to revive the parcel business. That's why we then rebranded it to a national e-commerce platform. And the target beneficiaries uh, for the platform were mainly large corporates, who we were also now able to register as e-sellers on our platform, small to medium enterprises who would find it difficult to participate in trade uh, globally. And we then provided this platform for people to sit on our mall and be able to sh showcase their ways and sell to the global community. And then at the end, uh, Zimpost then also offers the last mile del delivery of those products and services. So the Zimbabwe Mall is a game changer. Um, it's, it's an integrated national e-commerce platform uh, that facilitates e-marketplace. We see the post office as a marketplace where buyers and sellers should just meet because of our 
um, expansive branch network, and there is no one who can do it better that other than the post office. And we are an e-fulfillment center where we ensure that in the value chain, we are the uh, logistics giants for the last mile delivery of products that would have been bought online. Bought online. Um, it also enables e-payments for people who want to purchase their products globally. They are now able to, to participate fully and make all their payments um, on the mall. The platform links domestic retailers with local uh, and global purchasers, as well as local buyers and small to medium enterprises with the regional and international uh, markets. And with the postal distribution and logistics infrastructure, which is already linked to over 191 countries across the globe, there could be no better opportunity for reviving the postal business um, other than uh, tapping into e-commerce. The Zimbabwe Mall, um, it offers a secure um, customer information. That's why as an organization, when we decided to come up with a national online mall, we had to choose the dot post domain because it's a top level domain. Um, issues of security, cyber security are of importance, particularly um, where we are coming from customers where they want to really participate in physically uh, paying for their products and services and to do it online and or in order to boost confidence and have quite a number of people participating in online shopping, we had to make sure that as an organization, we also choose um, a domain that offers this security to our customers. So um, on our products and services that we are currently offering on our Zimbabwe mall, they are mainly categorized into four main areas. Uh, that's online shopping. These are the services that we have commercialized on our e-commerce platform. It's online shopping, um, online advertising, last mile delivery, and warehousing. On the first product line, we felt as an organization that the post office, it's high time that the post office operates 24-7 and 365, where the post office should be open um, on a daily basis and every time. And people can only be able to do this by accessing the postal services whilst they are in the comfort of their homes. Um, People should not wait for conventional hours for them to visit a post office. And we were saying this is the best opportunity for people to, for the post office to make money whilst even our doors are closed. We then also said um, the online uh, advertising where different retailers, different organizations are able to showcase their products and services on our e-commerce platform because our e-commerce platform um, is national in nature and being a top, sitting on a top level, level domain, it means that in terms of visibility um, and search optimization, um, Zimbabwe Mall is one of those sites uh, that you can easily access wherever you are and you access it as quickly as possible. So it's more visible because it's sitting on the top level of domain. Being the giant in the logistics um, services, last mile delivery could be best be done by a postal organization. So we have uh, customers that are not necessarily even sitting on our mall, but we have integrated their malls with our mall so that we offer last mile delivery, particularly retailers which sell groceries, pharmaceuticals, uh, medicines. We are able to offer last mile delivery as a service under our e-commerce product portfolio. Um, as Zimpost, again, we are also able to offer warehousing where we can have products and services coming from global suppliers and um, we are able to warehouse it in our, in our post offices where we have excess space. And whenever people then buy online, we then call, uh, collect from those distribution centers and deliver to people. 
thereby reducing even the time frame for a person in the value chain from a from a point where a person buys a product to a, when a product is actually delivered because most of the products will be having the um, warehouse within our post offices where we have excess space. So the post, uh, the, the Zimbabwe more is sitting on the dot post domain, like I had mentioned earlier, um, the dot post domain is hosted by the Universal Postal Union. And um, as Zimpost, we decided to go that route because the issues of cybersecurity were of paramount importance to us. We then acquired, on our Zimbabwe Mall, we acquired an online shop technology system from Shopify uh, with guidance from the Universal Postal Union again. Um, the online shop software design and customiz customization was done internally by our uh, information technology department through the innovations and business development section. Um, where we then also integrated for the payment gateway, we engaged PayNow to be our payment gateway for both local payments and MasterCard and Visa payments. Um, PayNow is a payment gateway that uh, accepts most popular electronic payment methods under a single contract. And when we first launched the Zimbabwe more, um, the products and services that we initially uh, started selling were philatelic products, and they are still the number one product as far as sales are concerned on our mall. Where we have philatelists, our um, philatelists now being able to access um, the new stamp issues that we would have issued easily on our Zimbabwe mall. And we then started uh, adding quite a number of products and services. We now have a number of e-sellers that we have recruited on our e-commerce platform, where we now have different categories. I'm sure my colleague Pauline will go through the Zimbabwe Mall with all of you, and you'll then be able to see the different product categories that we are currently offering on our Zimbabwe Mall. We have a number of um, e-sellers we have registered who are sitting on our mall, and uh, they are able to sell their products. And we then earn a commission from the sales that would have been done by people um, by these sellers. Once people also buy um, their products online, we also then offer the last mile delivery, thereby fulfilling the, uh, the e fulfillment in the e value chain on, on e commerce. And we are saying as a business, there is no better way for the post to grow other than this digital, uh, to harness this digital platform, particularly on e commerce. To revive the parcel business. So, when the Zimbabwe More project was initiated, the major objectives was to ensure that we establish a, a secure national e-commerce shopping mall. Uh, like I had mentioned earlier on, people were skeptical to buy online, and for in order for us to convince them, we had to ensure that. Um, the platform that we are going to be choosing as an organization provides the highest in terms of security for our customers so that it boosts confidence in them and then they will be able to transact. Um, the other objective was also to create an open uh, national e-commerce marketplace for domestic and international buyers and sellers to meet on this platform 24-7, 365. We, were say, we are saying as a, post, our, uh, as a post office, people should not be restricted in terms of time to access the various products and services that they require in a post office. They should be able to access these services any time of the day, any day of the week, and throughout the year. And most of our products, we were saying, um, the way post offices have been, situ they have been located uh, physically should be the same way that the post office should be accessed digitally. This is the platform. Mm. A post office is a marketplace where buyers and sellers should just meet to access various products and services without people necessarily traveling long distances. And we we're saying once we provide a digital platform, people are also able to 
get the last mile delivery of that particular of that particular product from their nearest post office without people necessarily traveling long distances and there was no better um we were we were the best positioned organization to then offer this national e-commerce marketplace for for the locals and for um e-sellers in the global market we also saw it as an opportunity to create new business relationships. For example, I've mentioned earlier on that in, on our platform, we have retailers who are actually, whom their e-commerce platforms are integrated to our platform. They don't necessarily sit on our platform, but we offer last mile delivery for the products that would have been bought online. During the national lockdowns in COVID-19, we started seeing um, our sales growing in that period because we then entered into that space when people were restricted in terms of traveling our platform became very active people would buy goods would buy groceries would, would buy medicines online and our postmen would then deliver uh, these products at their doorsteps thereby creating new business relationship with retailers that we never thought would be able to have relationships with we also wanted as an organization to tap into the e-commerce business so that we revive and um, give a rebirth and transform the postal business. Where we were saying that mail business has gone down, but we saw e-commerce as a, an opportunity to grow our parcel business and then to also offer convenience to the transacting public. So to date, um, most of our achievements to date um, on Zimbabwe more, we have about 138 e-sellers who are actually sitting on our Zimbabwe more. And these e-sellers have got their, they have different product categories that are being offered and, um, and people are able to sell on our e-commerce platform. And then Zimpost offer the last mile delivery. In terms of um, products that are actually sitting on our mall, we have about 479 products that are being sold on our e-commerce platform. We have managed to integrate our online shop with other retail giants like OK, uh, OK Zimbabwe, Africa Emart, Gains, Cash and Carry. These are grocery companies. And we also have pharmaceutical companies that are sitting on our mall and people can buy those products online and then they, we then deliver both first mile and last mile delivery. We collect from the supplier and we also deliver as a post office. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, the mall is also available on the World Wide Web and it is, it is accessible to everyone, everywhere. People can visit um, the, our mall and buy their products any time of the day. And this is an achievement where we are bringing convenience to the transacting public. People don't necessarily need to, to wait for conventional hours of business to start transacting. We have given a new, life, new lease of life to our postal business as far as parcel delivery is concerned. We have given a new lease of life to our postmen who are now able to offer door-to-door -door delivery to the people who would have bought, online, bought on, uh, online. The issue of postal density uh, with e-commerce becomes a thing of the past because we are now able to access every household. And as Zimbabwe, what we have done as well in um, where government has assisted the post, the post office uh, through our regulator, we have managed to set up community information centers where, where there is a post office, there is a community information center where people have access to internet services. So people, if they do not have smartphones and access to, uh, to, to internet, they can visit actually their local post office and visit the Zimbabwe mall, shop online, and then we have their products delivered wherever they are here in Zimbabwe. So in a way, the issue of postal density is also reducing by having Zimbabwe more transacting 
um, for for the different people that we have here. Because what we only need is a link and data to access the more. And as Zimpost as well, we have then went a further step to provide this. That is in case if, if people do not have access to internet services. Local products are being showcased on the international market. We have um, suppliers from tourist resort towns who used to sup who supply in the global market. They are actually sitting on our mall and they are actually selling um, their, their ways, bead, crush, crochetary, um, stone sculpture. People are unable to sell to the global market their products and sellers. And particularly the um, women, the youth, uh, small to medium enterprises have seen this platform as a good platform in, for them to showcase their ways in the global market. We have also seen a growth in revenue um, either from people see, sitting on the mall, Zimpost offering last mile delivery, or Zimpost offering warehousing, and also offering a platform where people can actually advertise their products and services. Others um, organizations have actually seen it as their distribution center, where they actually sit and then sell their ways. So there are a number of, of um, achievements that we as an organization have seen by having the Zimbabwe Mall um, being a national e-commerce platform because it's not, not only serving the postal business, but all the businesses can actually sit on our, on our mall. And Zimpost has got that advantage as well because of our expansive distribution network to offer the last mile delivery, thereby offering a fulfillment center. We are saying here in Zimbabwe, e-commerce has enabled the post office to become an e-marketplace, a fulfillment center, a supermarket of services and products. Because at the end of the day, we then offer both first mile and last mile delivery of products and services that have been bought online. And the key to um, e-commerce is the issue of security, the issue of visibility, and the issue of access. And Zimpost has been active in all these three areas. Um, I'm sure my co-presenters will come in to, to elaborate more issues with regards to security. As far as customers are concerned, they want to make sure that they transact on a platform where they feel secure for their funds. And they also want to transact, for them to be able to transact, the, the issues of access should then be resolved. And with the help of government, um, we have managed to set up community information centers and containerized village information centers where we do not have a post office for people to have access to internet so that we are leaving no one behind in, uh, in order to bridge this digital divide. Thank you so much. I, um, I think my co-presenters will present, will take you through the actual Zimbabwe more and the issue of why Zimpost chose to sit on the dot post domain. Thank you so much. Just one second. Thank you very much, um, um, Financier. We have yes. actually a couple of questions before you leave. Um, Mozambique has raised their hand in the chat. I'm not sure if they would like to take the floor to speak. Um, I see they've put the hand, their hand down. Um, so if not, there's a question in the chat in the Q&A box. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that um, Zimpos is reading the question. If you like, I'll read it. Would you like me to read it out loud? for you, or would you want to answer it um, using the, the Q&A box? The question is, how local e-commerce market, how local e-commerce market in Zimbabwe, is, I think maybe it's what is local e-commerce market in, in Zimbabwe status? Um, does uh, maybe the question is trying to say, is Zimbabwe mall post competing with that sector and then another question how zimbabwe post does last mile delivery in 
up country, I believe? And how do you resolve the problem of addressing um, the addressing problem, which is common in all of Africa? Does Zimbabwe post implement crowd logistics and its last mile delivery? And what are the challenges you have faced in implementation of Zimbabwe Mall Lock Post? And how Zimbabwe Mall works with these global e-commerce platforms? So I think you can um, answer that in the chat box and maybe you wish to answer it now. And there's another question that's coming in. Uh, 479 products of 138 sellers on Zimbabwe Mall. Is it, uh, or is it that Zimbabwe Zimpo's itself a seller as well? Another question is coming in in the chat. How long did it take to okay. set up the platform um, and how much did it cost? So, much. so maybe I'll, I'll first, um, the first question is uh, on how local e-commerce Don't think we're hearing you if you're speaking, um, Venencia. Is someone speaking? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, thank you. So in terms of, of uh, market share, I think I'll be able to share the analytics also during the course of the presentation. But in terms of um, adoption, um, even within the market, you'd find that e-commerce in terms of penetration, it is still very low. Uh, like, like I had mentioned earlier on that people are skeptical to buy things online. And um, I think um, the way we actually saw an, an, an increase in the adoption of, of e-commerce was during COVID-19 when we had uh, restrictions and you'd find that people had no option than to, to go to e-commerce. It then assisted in people actually embracing e-commerce. So those people we embraced e-commerce during that period are more or less um, most of the customers that we are actually currently serving. Are more or less um, most of the customers that we are for the feedback and there is need I think you may have to turn off your speaker for um, them, them pause for it while you're speaking so in terms of embracing e-commerce um from quite a number of people, you then find that there's still need. There is still need for more marketing efforts to be done in order for people to actually embrace uh, online shopping. Then on these, um, the other questions. So the second question was, um, is Zimbabwe more dot post get, get a competition with that sector. So e-commerce, um, you'd find that a number of organizations are actually embracing online shopping. And what has been happening is that we have a number of organizations that are uh, creating their online shops and then they sell their products online. But the nature of the e-commerce platform for, for, for Zimbabwe, which is the Zimbabwe Mall, it's national in nature in the sense that it cuts across all sectors of the economy. 
and people can freely sit on those malls. And what we have been doing, we have been now um, also integrating with people who already have e-commerce platforms to actually sit on our platform. Because we are saying that in the value chain on online shopping, there is no organization um, that can do logistics better than, than, than the post office. This is a digitalized parcel delivery um, of products that we used to have traditionally. And uh, the post office is the best in, in offering that service provision. So you then find that our competition is a bit different where we have other organizations hosting their own e-commerce platform. But the Zimbabwe more, it's more like an, a national e-commerce platform that both sell their own postal products as well as any other products that people wishes to buy online from wherever they are. And we then offer uh, the logistics side of the business as well. So you then find um, that the competition will be a bit different from the current e-commerce service providers who are currently in the market because they are um, maybe offering a platform that offers uh, a, pro a certain product line or they are covering a, a certain sector of the economy. But we are saying ours is a national e-commerce platform where everyone, we should then be able to have a universal services nature in it. Then the second question was, how Zimbabwe, how Zimbabwe uh, dot, Zimbabwe post do last mile delivery in our country and how do you resolve the problem of addressing which is common in all Africa. So currently what we have been doing in terms of delivery, door to door delivery is done in urban areas and um, in rural areas when the products have actually arrived, uh, people come and collect at the post office because you then find that some areas are also inaccessible. So door-to-door -door delivery is mainly in urban areas, but in, but in rural setups, um, people come and collect their products and their goods um, at the local post office. Then um, the other, the third question was, does Zimbabwe post implement the crowd logistics in last mile delivery? I think on this one, let me allow our e-commerce executives to, to just come in. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Normally, uh, on deliveries, we also uh, involve crowdsourcing model, especially when the deliveries are beyond our our reach. We have uh, delivery areas that we go, but if that area is outside our delivery area, we also uh, empower shippers or other grocery stores. We dodge the middlemen and directly reach out to temporary or part-time delivery executive so that we keep we don't disturb we don't disturb the the, the flow of deliveries. Mm -hmm. So to 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 keep um things in perspective, uh it's just a matter of um riding hailing services where we don't have the vehicles we use uh other people's vehicles for deliveries. Thank you. Partnerships. Through partnerships. Then, um, sorry, I think I lost some questions um, when I was booted out, but there's a question which is saying, um, attract your sellers to join the platform and sell their products. They are constant problem of sellers asking us, how is our traffic? And they want us to in inquire mm -hmm. to sell their products. Sorry, um, I think, I'm not so sure in terms of clarity on this question, but what I'm observing is that how do we attract e-sellers to actually sit um, on our mall? I think the issue of the, the business model that we have taken as a post is that we already have existing customers for postal products where we are offering convenience for them to access their products 
um, anywhere, anytime in the country. So um, you then find that that market as well is now also able to access any other products. For example, um, agents and government business. People don't necessarily need to wait. We have got a product that we offer for motor vehicle licensing. We are saying you don't need to wait for, for us to open our business at eight o'clock and then close our post office at 4.30 for you to be accessed, to access your licensing. You can do it online and then the postman delivers it to you. So you then see that this range of products and services where we are saying we are not limiting our e-commerce platform to post our products only allows um, the e-commerce platform to also have the competitive advantage where in terms of marketing, it's, it's not so difficult because what we would have basically done is, okay, much as the retailer giant already has got existing clients. And if okay, much sits on our platform, we are also then, our efforts in terms of marketing are aided um, by, the, by uh, the marketing efforts that, already exist in the brand for the product, for the e-seller that would have recruited. So you then find that um, our marketing and convincing of customers is that people come at our, on our platform to access different products from different uh, service providers, thereby making, thereby giving it um, that reach, uh, which is not necessarily done by us, but also by our partners and also their, uh, ex how the brand has already been existing in the market. If they already have got a market share and huge market share, once they come on board on our platform, in terms of marketing, um, the people, in, term in terms of adoption, it's easy to then reach out to those customers that are already existing and also to have new customers coming on board. But like I said earlier on, um, we have not yet reached the standards where we want to reach as far as e-commerce is concerned, there's really still need for more effort to actually have people adapting to e-commerce because you find that uh, the issue of embracing um, e-commerce is still um, in its infancy, particularly here in, 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 in Africa, like some have uh, uh, alluded to earlier on. So they still really need more effort to be put in place. But what is critical is the business model that you choose in hosting this e-commerce platform where you don't necessarily have to be a postal e-commerce platform, but you open it to the market and you then ride on the existing uh, benefits from the other service providers. Then there is a question which is saying, please, how are you dealing with custom duty charges on cross-border e-commerce? Is it paid along with the order or packets are assessed and duty fixed on arrival to, to Zoom posts? Yeah. So um, on this one, uh, let me also allow our our e-commerce executive who is on, on the day today so that she elaborates more and uh, give you advice on this one. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, our platform, I'm going to, to elaborate on that one on my next presentation, but the platform charges the items, then they charge the shipping costs, but the shipping cost doesn't include the custom duty charges. Custom duty charges are assessed, and the, the packets are assessed uh, and fixed on arrival to the impost. They are separate, so they are charged at the Office of Exchange. Um, so, and please, um, okay, uh, all right. So I think in terms of questions, I'm not so sure if I've left anything. So I, think, I think you could proceed now. Um with the next part of the next presentation. Percent. Yeah, and um, just one one point, when you present, and that, um, can you go into um, full screen mode when you present? So that, um, because the what you had showing before, it was showing your screen where you had um, the next slide coming up. So if you just go to presentation mode, full screen mode. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay not it.
Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, but if you just click slideshow now, let's see if it goes into full screen. Okay, thank you. So this is our website URL for one to link. Uh, the Zimbabwe Mo system provides users with an integrated platform which offers free e seller registration. And last mile delivery, and it acts as a key in digital trade across the globe. Hi, Zimpost. I believe there's some challenges with your audio. Um, seems that your bandwidth may be a little bit low. Yeah, the Sorry, we had the network interruption. Okay. That's understand understandable. We will just stand by to wait till you bring it back up. Thanks everyone for your patience while um the resource on technical issues. Okay, I think only something quick. I think allow us to go to write to your domain. If someone is speaking, we're not hearing you so well. So allow us to go to the white I don't think we heard what you said. Um can you type it in the chat maybe? I don't think we heard what you said. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Golden Chasing. I'm the ice. It's in ICT infrastructure manager for Simple Strike Limited. Um, let me let me try to share my screen. Okay, is it is it visible on your side? Yep, it's visible. Okay, yes, I see it. Yep. Okay. Um. So I'm going to present on uh, why Simpost chose um, the post platform. Uh, we embarked uh, on this journey as Simpost through conducting a wide research, uh, which involved re uh, reading widely. Um, and uh, this was around 2013 to 2014. We noted that a survey was conducted by uh, UPU and it showed that post offices worldwide had developed at least 55 types of postal e-services over the past 20 years. Um, more than 70% of the world posts had indicated uh, uh, that electronic services were strategically important uh, to the postal business. So the postal e-service would uh, continue to develop in the UPU uh, world postal strategy had taken this important development uh, into account. Uh, on the 25th um, Universal Postal Union Congress, which was held in 2012, uh, gave birth to the dot post group. Uh, and as an organization, uh, we looked at the dot. I believe you've lost audio. I think we've lost uh, Mr. Mr. Chizzy. Um, is anyone else from Zimpost on, on the line? Venencia or Pauline? I think he's coming back in now. Mr. Chizzy, are you still there? Okay, so, so it, there was a network interruption. Okay. Yes, okay, let me, let me reshare the screen and proceed.
We are seeing your screen now. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we are. Yes. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we are. Yes. Go ahead. Please proceed. Okay. So, as an organization, we looked at the dot post group. Okay. Uh, as the as an organization, we looked at the um, dot post group. Okay. Uh, as an organization, we looked uh, at the dot post group and what it had to offer to the market, uh, to the post, and we realized that uh, the dot post intends to bridge um, the digital divide by creating a secure uh, platform uh, that enables postal e services to be delivered. Um, it also um, intended to, to, to make uh, the searching on the search engines uh, for the postal services on the internet to become uh, much more easier. Um, it, it also acted as a bridge uh, that created, um, it, it also acted as a bridge uh, between um, the traditional physical mail services and the new electronic ones. Uh, the domain also could facilitate the entry uh, for developing countries onto the realm of electronic uh, postal services. Uh, we also noted that uh, new services could be de uh, developed, offered in a secure environment uh, across the borders. Uh, the postal brand uh, will also be strengthened, uh, modernized, and made uh, instantly recognizable on the web. Um, on the security checks, uh, which we did, we noted that uh, the dot post uh, platform is considered to be more secure than other domains because it is the first sponsored top level domain uh, to utilize the domain name system security extension, a set of codes for searching the uh, domain name system that uh, the global database system that translates the computers fully qualified domain name into uh, an internet protocol address. The security extension also helps to prevent phishing and other cyber security um, crimes by uh, signing and authenticating legitimate uh, websites. Uh, it also makes use of public key cryptography, um, which is incorporated uh, in the DNS hierarchy to form a chain of um, trust originating um, at the root zone. Um, DNSSEC uh, is also crucial uh, to the dot post platform as the UPU aims to build a secure, uh, trusted uh, space on the internet for e-commerce, uh, e-government, uh, electronic postal services provided by the postal industry. Uh, using the dot post DNSSEC domain uh, names is crucial for any postal organization that conducts highly sensitive data transactions uh, on their website or once uh, to ensure traffic to their legitimate website and uh, not uh, a scam one. As designated postal operators uh, in developing countries and still in the process of digitalizing processes and services, it is very difficult to set aside a budget for securing our e-commerce platform. Hence, we saw it prudent to utilize the dot post uh, platform. The platform also comes with all the security prerequisites for integration with online payment gateway solutions, um, such as PayNow. Having done all the checks uh, above, we noted that the dot post provides the necessary platform for Zimpost to develop other business opportunities and increase its visibility on the global market. It was therefore recommended that Zimpost join the dot post group to learn more about uh, dot post and e-commerce, as well as take advantage of uh, the subsidized uh, fees. Uh, in October uh, of 2017, Zimbabwe Post joined the UPU dot post group to benefit from security and interconnectivity, uh, which are strong foundations for digital services using the dot post top level domain internet infrastructure. So in, in short, why dot post? Searching for the postal services on the internet uh, became easier uh, and uh, it's a bridge uh, which created, uh, it, 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 it's a bridge 
are between the traditional physical mail services and new electronic ones. The domain uh, also facilitated the entry for developing countries into the realm of electronic uh, postal services. The new services um, can also be de developed, offered uh, in a secure environment across the borders. The Zimpost brand uh, will also be strengthened and modernized and made instantly recognizable on the web. How the post secure and uh, the Zimpost online presence and digital services. Um, dot post is a trusted domain that provides um, high security for our national platform. Uh, the Zimbabwe Mo, which hosts uh, 118 e-sellers, uh, as well as um, 479 products, which include postal products and independent uh, products. Uh, dot post provides 100% security to buyers information, which include a debit card, uh, personal information, uh, with globalization uh, cross-border opportunities in areas such as e-commerce and other developing uh, and, uh, and others are developing issues of authentication, security, e-payment, um, and more are important. E-shops established under the UBU .post internet infrastructure accessible by uh, 192 countries. The .post um, domain is a secure environment which reduces uh, e-shopping risk and they hope deliver a stable and secure channel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to remind colleagues that there are questions in the Q&A box um, that you can answer. Yes, um, either, I think answer either, either by typing them in or you can answer them live if you wish now. And there's some questions in the chat. Would you like me to read them out or is it? Oh. Okay, are, are there any questions? Okay, let me, let me scroll back to the, to the questions. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing any questions which are IT related. There's a question, so let me, so let me maybe I should read out in the Q&A box, in the Q&A function. There are a couple of questions. Um, E-business from Philip, e-business requires extensive training on staff and raising awareness of misconceptions about e-business. How has Zimpost made sure that these challenges are being dealt with and also how are post offices located in Zim, I guess Zimbabwe, approximately what does this is between post offices? And finally, what are the internet or connectivity status in Zimbabwe? So I, I think you can answer it either, you know, verbally here or you can type it in. And the, in the chat, there's also a question that is being asked about how you're dealing with customs situ challenges, sorry, charges on cross-border e-commerce. Um, is it patine? I'm not sure if that's correct, the word, but is it patine along with the order of packeter are assessed and duty fixed on arrival to Zimpost? Um, I think that may be maybe some French translation challenges there, but there's also the other question related to cross-border has been um, asked before, how are you dealing with customs duty charges on cross-border e-commerce? Is it paid along with the order or packets are assessed and duty fixed on arrival to Zimpo? So I think what you can do in order to keep the flow, maybe you can type the answers in the chat or in the Q&A box and you can probably move on to the next um, presentation part or you can if you feel free to answer them now, if you like. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so I think let me just go through the questions that I've seen here. On our 479 products of 138 sellers on Zimbabwe more or Zimpost is itself a seller too. So Zimpost is an e-seller 
um, is actually also registered as an e-seller offering postal products. Then we also have a wide range of other products and services in terms of category um, where e-sellers can then uh, sit as e-sellers as well. So Zimpost, yes, indeed, it's an e-seller selling postal products um, on the Zimbabwe more. Then um, the second question is attract your sellers to join the platform and sell their products. We have the constant problem of sellers asking us how is our traffic? Oh, okay, they, this I think I've responded to it earlier on. Then from Philip, it's um, e-business requires extensive training on staff and raising awareness of misconceptions about e-business. I think on, on this one as Zimpost, we... So the question is, how has the Zimpost made sure that these challenges are being dealt with? And also how are post offices located in Zimbabwe? So on this question, um, Zimpost has got a training facility which is constantly on the lookout for uh, staff training on new trends within um, the market for the di different products and services that we are currently offering. And also um, products and services that are in line with our digitalization drive. Because as a post, we are moving with the vision of being a smart post office by 2025. And when we mean smart post office is that we have to ensure that most of our products and services that are currently sitting um, on the um, premises of uh, physical presence also sits on the digital platform. So the constant training is actually done by our training section. And we have got a dedicated, within the marketing division, e-commerce um, um, uh, section which ensures that they constantly do uh, staff updates and they also assist with training material to our uh, training officers. So that's how we have been um, ensuring that our staff are constantly trained um, at the post office because a number of our products and services are actually being digitalized, moving from the traditional to the digital uh, platforms. And then in terms of our distribution, Zimpost has over 240 post offices, which are located in almost every district, uh, every province um, in Zimbabwe. We have what we call districts, we have provinces and urban areas. And we also have 180 community information centers, 35 containerized village information centers, where we don't have a post office, we have containerized infrastructure, where, which offers postal products and services. We also have what we call um, uh, uh, post offices off counters. These are all uh, post, postal business, which is being undertaken by maybe a retailer within a certain community in order to, to, to reduce our postal density. So you then find that uh, even uh, at a certain, um, we can call them a growth point, maybe down in the village, the post office might be seated, situated in a district and down in the village, there's a grocery store and that grocery owner who is also uh, offering postal business on, an, on a service level agreement with the post office. So you then find that our network as far as accessing postal products is concerned, it's very um, expansive because of those kinds of arrangements. And we also operate what we call post office points and post office kiosks, where we sign in partnerships with different service providers to offer also postal products within our post offices. And um, then from Chris, there is, well, everyone is calling for postal services to tap into e-commerce and the online market. How is Zimpost considering itself as being a part of the border system by ensuring the postal system is not used as a conduit for the importation and uh, movement of contraband and other illegal products? So I think on this one, um, uh, we have a list of prohibited products and services that are not allowed to pass through even the post offices. and we use uh, those, regu those regulations strictly within our post offices. But we also have some of our operations uh, people whom I can allow to, to, to 
to just comment a bit, particularly on this aspect in ensuring that um, illegal products do not pass through the borders. As I'm waiting for the operations person, I think the question from Joseph Shabalala on how many postal outlets we have, I think I've mentioned it earlier on, we have over 200, we have about 240 postal outlets, we have 79 post office points, we have uh, 17 post office kiosks, and we also, um, we also run community information centers and containerized village, village information centers. So in terms of our distribution, we are covering um, almost every district and province here in Zimbabwe. You know, sometimes uh, as, a, as a joke, we say, if we combine all bottle stores, you can, they cannot even compete to the post office as, as just um, on, the, on the lighter side. Uh, so allow me to, for Ndana, um, from our operation side to also uh, come into the issue of illegal products passing through the portal system. Uh, yellow. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, pardon me, my voice is not uh, all that good, but I'll try to respond to that question. Um, like she has said, we have the list of prohibited items on our website. If you visit the Zimbabwe Mall, post, the list of prohibited items are listed there. And um, when items are being dispatched at our central sorting office, um, there are some security checks that are done, uh, including scanning and including uh, the use of uh, sniffing dogs to ensure that no prohibited items are allowed to pass through the postal network. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think the last question from uh, Marius, it's good morning. Thank you for your enriching presentation in general. What is the comparative cost advantage of implementing this platform? So uh, for implementing this platform, I think particularly from the, my predecessors we have presented, I think from why we chose dot .post, um, we are saying as Zimpost, we did not um, invest much because we took advantage of existing platforms that are already secure by going to UPU and using the dot .post domain. Um, all the investment was actually done by UPU. We are simply riding on the existing infrastructure and the infrastructure is to our advantage because it's, it's, it's a secure domain. And with Shopify, who are currently um, the frontline um, platform that we are currently using, we also did not do much in terms of investment because they've already um, a, 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 an e-commerce platform which you can then customize, like I had mentioned earlier on, that what we simply did was to customize the platform to suit our market. And the, in terms of um, investment, uh, be it um, servers, we, there, there was no much investment from us. And in terms of cost, I think um, the choice of having the dot .post domain and also Shopify as the platform proved to be very cost effective for us because we, and we are also not uh, investing in new technology as far as upgrading and updating the system is concerned. It's being done by the service provider. Thank you. I think from the question and answers, um, uh, I've exhausted, uh, unless there are some. So I think um, if you go ahead with responding in the, in the Q&A box and typing it, you can probably proceed right, with the rest you. of your presentation because I know time is, time is against us a bit. So I know there's a demonstration so to be done. So maybe you can go ahead with a demonstration or or something similar, thanks. Yes.
Okay, thank you so much. I think we we'll move over to um, our e-commerce executives to just do a demonstration of our Zimbabwe mall. Of course, if there's time at the end, we can field more questions, obviously. Thank you. I'll just do a quick rundown of um, the Zimbabwe More features. This is our Zimbabwe More homepage. To log in, you have to type the website URL www.zimbabwemall.post. And uh, if you are a new buyer on the mall, you need to have a buyer account. And if you, uh, you want to be a seller, you need to have a, a seller account. The system won't allow you to complete the checkout process if you don't have an account. Um, okay, this is the login page for a buyer, for a new buyer. You need to input your details if you are new and create your account. If you're an existing buyer, you just log in using your email credentials as shown on the slide. Then to log in as a seller, you just click where it is written sell on Zimbabwe more. It will guide you on joining and creating a seller account. And sellers have their own uh, accounts which they manage. We don't manage their accounts. So this is the um, seller login page and account creation image where a seller inputs his or her details. Then after registration, he or she uses his or her uh, email address to log into, into his account. So this is the homepage. Uh, the homepage provides useful information that enables buyers and e-sellers to take necessary actions. Therefore, the following functions are available on this page. On the top left of the page, we have a currency converter. We have uploaded uh, two currencies. We have the US dollar and we have our own local currency, the ZWL. So um, one can either buy using the local currency or using the US dollar. Then there is a search panel where customers can search for products uh, using different categories. And a client simply types in the product name he or she is looking for for a quick search. Then we have the subscribe and save option. Uh, that one is for customers who want to subscribe to our newsletter. The my account option is the one that a buyer uses. It refers to the account of an e-buyer where one can log in to view uh, his or her order history and account activity. Then the cart on the top right, it's just an electronic basket where a customer can add his products during the, the buying process. And we also have uh, advertising solutions. We offer online advertising space. And these are some of our advertisers sitting on the platform. Corporates and individuals can advertise on Zimbabwe more uh, for a very little amount. And uh, those who are willing to, to rent space, they just get in touch with us. We, there's an email icon that is on the far right which is written sent message. If you just send your message there, we will definitely get in touch with you and interact. Then there are the deals, the weekly deals for products. Depending on the setting, deals can be allocated, can be allocated to a higher level promotion. In this case, product, uh, products which were on promotion were textbooks. That's why they are the ones which are shown on the picture. And they are published to everyone. And one can actually make a purchase by simply clicking on the item on the weekly, uh, weekly deals and it will lead you to the cart and it will actually uh, lead you to the checkout process, to the payment and checkout processes. Then we have product collections. Uh, these are product bundles 
which contain an assortment of several sets that usually belong to a common theme or have a common subject, like art and craft. If you click on that blue link where it's written art and, cra art and craft, uh, it will lead you to everything that falls under the art and craft category. And we have um, the featured products. These are uh, typically best selling or well viewed or brand new products. So they are meant for this uh, featured products uh, panel is meant to highlight products to our customers on the storefront. Uh, this can be because we feel mm. that we want to sell more of that particular mm. item or a specific item. We use that the featured product panel. Then we have um, promotional blocks. These are customizable blocks that are used to display content. Uh, this space can be used for advertising purposes. And from the picture that is on this slide, um, promotional blocks are used to display information on civil service travel. We, we have a, a, a clearing department within Simpost. We also have a property management uh, department and we have logistics and delivery. So these promotional blocks have been used to advertise those three. Then we have a footer menu. It's more of a summary or a shortcut to some Zimbabwe more options. And in this case, the footer menu is showing the basic information on Zimbabwe more. It, it, I think we may have gotten a disconnection there. Um, not seeing the screen. Sorry. Yes. Uh, okay, we're seeing a screen now. You can proceed, I guess. I've been booted out, but I'm almost done. Then we, we have, uh, this is our checkout page. Uh, this checkout page requires the customer shipping information, includes name, address, it, country number, before you continue with your shipment and method. Uh, the short includes the Lost you again. Okay, we're seeing your screen, but we have no audio. If you're talking, there's no audio, just in case you're not aware. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can, yes. You can proceed. Can I proceed? Yes, yes, okay. please proceed. Huh? May Sam, can you hear me? Yes, we do hear you. Please go ahead. We can hear you. You can proceed and we can see your screen. Please proceed. Please proceed. Can you hear us? Right now we're seeing how to buy on Zimbabwe more, but we're not hearing you. 
you've lost your screen. So if you're okay. okay. Uh, Go ahead. Yes. You're not seeing your screen now though. If you if you click the make payment button, the page will then a new page. I, Colleen, we're not seeing your screen. Where it requests for your CVV <clears throat> card number as well as, as the name on the card for you to uh, successfully make a payment. And this is a seller dashboard that we find on Zimbabwe more. A, a person can view the store sales and statistics and store earnings using the dashboard. And a seller can actually manage his way account using these analytics. And we have um, Shopify is our backend support. This is the homepage for Shopify. They provide uh, analytics for orders, products, customers. Uh, there was a question, someone asking for stored traffic. This is where we get our traffic, um, uh, our traffic information. These are supported by Shopify. For orders, this is the page that we get from Shopify. We get the order list, which states the order number, the date it was placed and the customer name and the amount that the customer pays as well as the fulfillment status. If you click on the order, it will give you the detailed information of the order so that you arrange for shipping. If there's need for customer interaction, you do so the customer details will be provided. The same with the product listing. There's a list of the product that we offer on Zimbabwe more. Then, <clears throat> our online store speed, and other key financial reports and even the store transactions. And it is 100% accurate, uh, this analytics. And they also give us the number of sessions, the retaining customer rates, the average order values, the total orders as shown on this image. I've just attached a number of images. So everything is provided for. And there is uh, limited um, manual processes in this platform. Everything is just so provided. And even the, the best selling products are also provided. Then Shopify provides us with uh, a number, a wide range of apps for applications for different purposes. The applications uh, cover the marketing options, conversions, store design, customer service, store management, merchandising, fulfillment, shipping and delivery. And in our case, at the moment, we are using three uh, multi-vendor marketplace. This one is now for store management. Then you have the dy dynamic currency converter for the currency conversions on the platform. And you also use the pop convert for banners and, and pop-ups for advertisers on the platform. Thank you very much. Uh, questions? So I think this is a time now for questions on, um, you can again use the Q&A box or if you wish, I'd be, you can raise your hands. Zimpos, uh, do you have any more presentations at this point to me? No, I think uh, th these are the presentations that we, we had for today's session. Okay. All right. So I guess we could take any question, additional questions that colleagues have right now. So if you okay. have any questions, so quest feel free to ask. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, there is a question from Morias on how we made this platform known to the general public or users. 
So what we did, like I initially mentioned that when we launched it initially, it was Zimpost more strictly for postal products. We then launched it as a national e-commerce platform. And what we did, this was actually launched by government, by uh, the Minister um, uh, of ICT Postal and Courier Services, where we report to as an organization. And um, government launched uh, this platform and it was um, in all media platforms, uh, the launch aspects. So we had a campaign from pre-launch to the launch date and post-launch using various mediums, um, be it traditional media to social media. And currently what we have been doing as far as marketing is concerned, we have been riding on the social media platforms um, to I think we lost you again. To market um, the online shop. I don't know if there are other questions. I, I had seen that one for how we ensure that the public knows. And it's an on, ongoing effort, actually, because you find that a number of people still need to embrace online shopping. Thank you very much. Are there any further questions from colleagues, our attendees, participants? So as you can see, Tracy. yes, okay. go ahead. Oh, okay. I think I was saying, I don't know if there are any further questions, but from, from our end, I think we are done. All right. Thank you very much. As you can see, Misam has placed in the chat um, a link to tomorrow's session um, to register for the session tomorrow, 28th. This will get into some more technical details of so today, as you would have realized, this was not designed to be technical, um, designed to be more of a general um, achievements presentation tomorrow. <laughs> There will be a technical deep dive. So that link that Mesam shared in the chat is um, available still to, regi to register for tomorrow's session if you wish to attend. Same time, but you have to use this registration form because it can't use the same link from today's session to, for tomorrow. You have to register with this form that is on that link for tomorrow's session. If there are no further questions, I'm going to just share my screen to wrap up today's presentation, if you don't mind. And what I will do is uh, highlight the fact that this is a um, series that we're offering to um, the postal sector as well as to, to the general public. Um, as you know, today's session, we focused on Zimbabwe. Um, Zim Post, um, and as you would have heard, the dot post domain is the, the driving force behind the infrastructure uh, of what they have done along with their backend provider Shopify. If you wish to learn more about dot post, feel free to contact us, secretariat.info.post, or you can learn about more about dot post at httpsregister.post. Um, you can register um, domains based on your country, based on your postal operator name, or based on product names such as Zimbabwe Mall Lot Post, um, or even your country code. So, for example, zw.post or tz.post for Tanzania, and so on. Um, the approach that you take to register your domain name is to um, go to register.post to validate your organization and we will get in touch with you to um, give you more details about exactly how to register. But you can find all the information at https info.post or by contacting us at sec secretary at info.post. Now, as has been hinted, 
this is um, the start of a, a, a series of presentations about uh, our dot post uh, group members. Today, you've heard about Zimpost and Zimbabwe Mall dot post, and tomorrow there'll be a deep dive, as I said earlier, um, in terms of a technical deep dive as to exactly how they did what they what they did and the challenges they would have encountered and um, a walkthrough maybe you can ask more technical questions there. Um, the following week we have um, Senegal, La Poste in Senegal, who will be delivering a presentation similarly in French um, at 11 a.m. on the 3rd of August and on 11 a.m. on the 4th of August and on the 10th and 11th of August um, at 11 a.m. as well. This is all on Central European time. Um, Tanzania will demonstrate their stamps shop poster, um, stamps e-shop. The link there, https um, bit.ly dot dot post showcase gives you registration links for the public domain, the public sessions, and you can feel free to contact us um, if you haven't received your emails already about the sessions that are the technical um, walkthroughs with everyone from the postal sector. So that's um, what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Um, I want to leave you with a video, but before that, um, I want to make sure that there are no further questions for Zimbabwe and Zimpost um, at this point in time. Um, are there any further questions that you have? It doesn't seem so at this point. I'm not seeing nothing in the in the question answer box or nothing in the chat. So I would like to leave you with um, a short video about dot post that I invite you to to take a look at and to um, join us tomorrow if you are um, technically minded to understand more about the what's happening with um, the dot post environment and how Zimbabwe used dot post and Shopify to deliver this, this fantastic solution. And I'm very, very keen to hear about that myself. So um, thank you very much. And let me leave this video with you um, as our, as we wrap up today's presentation. Welcome to Dot Post, a unique internet space managed by the Universal Postal Union, benefiting its members and the whole postal community. A safe space on the internet dedicated exclusively to postal services, where security is maintained 24 hours a day. Each member of the Dot Post community can offer their postal services with confidence. A unique, innovative, integrated and boundless space in constant expansion. There are already over 50 members in the Dot Post group taking on the challenge to successfully facilitate cohesive digital strategies globally. Security standards adopted for dot post prevent redirection to unintended and fraudulent sites. Phishing attacks, malware, botnet and spam are monitored under dot post, complying with incident management procedures. Members can establish secure email solutions under dot post as well. Dot post is a digital gateway to new business possibilities. Posts can extend or transform their traditional services. By using dot post, they can improve their visibility, enhancing brand recognition on the internet. Dot post is a safe and reliable online market space for buyers and sellers. I'm sorry, I think um, I accidentally stopped that. Um, in any event, I think time has run out and I will fix that technical issue shortly. So um, I just want to thank all of the um, presenters today from ZimPost. Um, I really enjoyed today's presentation. I'm sure all of you who joined us today also enjoyed it. And I look forward to working closely with ZimPost and their team in the future. And I look forward to seeing many of you here tomorrow for the deep dive, technical deep dive in our session. I'd like to thank all of the participants, attendees for your wonderful contributions in the chat, 
your excellent questions. And as I said, do come back tomorrow where we would um, work with you in this technical deep dive and our colleagues from Zimpost would really walk you through the technical stages of how they did this. So thank you once again. Do enjoy the rest of your, your day um, or your evening, or your afternoon, or wherever you are. And um, I really thank you one more time for joining us at our Dot Post Member Showcase webinar series. Thank you once again and do enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.